Oops. Okay, good. We're back. Howdy and salutations, y'all, and welcome to the first ever Sunday morning stream. Sorry about that noise. Um, I have so many regrets already, but we're going to keep going and see how this goes. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> it is 8 a.m. in the morning where I'm at on a Sunday, which um, was certainly a choice I made for some reason. But I don't want to miss out on streaming, and Thursdays aren't going to be viable for a little while, so this is what we're going to do. Let me get my pen mapping sorted out, and we'll jump in here. So, if you remember where we left off, um, I do believe that... Let me make sure the audio balancing's right. We're still tweaking some stuff with that. Um, boop -boop -boop -boop. Can y'all hear me okay now? Hopefully. <laughs> you can hear my voice. I'm still, like, just waking up and drinking water and getting ready to go. So this this, this will be interesting. <laughs> but yeah. So because of different scheduling things, we are going to be streaming Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, technically. Um, certainly an interesting approach. But I think it'll be good. I think it'll work out. I just need to wake up a little bit. Um, bigger thing. <sighs> Be, uh, before we pick up further, I did want to give y'all a heads up that regardless of the new spring schedule, next week I am unfortunately not going to be able to do squat in the way of streaming. Um, I am going to be out of town. I've got business stuff I have to do. Um, it should be fun and interesting, actually, but it, um, I can't really take a computer with me on a plane, you know? Um, I mean, I know these days you can, but my, trust me when I say my streaming computer is definitely not um, going to fit in the TSA regulations. And not just because it has water cooling, although I think that alone would probably do it. <laughs> not anything fancy, but yeah. it, it does well. I'm happy with it. Um, but yes, in any case, we've... Uh, yeah. Sorry, still waking up. Next week, we probably won't have anything. We might have something on the Sunday of next week, but we definitely won't have anything on the 30th. So this week is really going to be the last of our April streams. I am sorry about how helter-skelter the schedule is right now. Um, May is looking to be a lot more stable and normal and sane. <laughs> so be looking. Let's, we're, we're, we're all looking forward to that. April's going to be the uh, crazy month. Okay. <sighs> Beyond that, let's just do a quick refresh of where we left off with this Sifamir quick sketch. Reminder of what we're doing these days. We have been doing what I'm calling speed runs, which I'm sure for many artists would still be horribly arduously slow, but for where we're at, it's a notable improvement. We're trying to keep it to under four hours. Um, right now, we're looking to be well within that margin. That's some um, excluding breaks. My original estimate was exactly four hours, including breaks, and I don't think I um, planned it well. <laughs> but um, but we're sticking to all of the other requirements. We're just not counting the breaks against our timer anymore. Because, I mean, it's not like I count the time between streams against it either. Otherwise, this would be a week-long drawing. Which, I mean, as far as commissions go, it would be. So I should probably be a little cautious with my timing. Um, but, in any case, for what we're doing here, fairly quick, we spent 15 minutes on posing or composition, um, noting that we got the pose from Pinterest, we just made some slight tweaks and figured out that we could adapt it properly. Um, we spent one hour each on the initial sketching, on the line work and refinement, and then we will be spending a total of one hour on the... Grayscale. Yeah. I'm so sorry, y'all. <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, we have spent 30 minutes so far on the grayscale, and we had to we had to wrap up last time, so we'll do the second half of that. And then, technically, the plan was just 15 minutes on color, um, but given our timing, we could actually spend up to 45 minutes if we really want to. I am suspecting we won't. I don't think we're going to need to. But, um, we're gonna see. Let's see. 
I am trying to think through and remember clearly what color each thing is supposed to be. <laughs> um, so I'll have to be careful with that. Mainly because I think that the apron tunic has changed form a couple of times. So I'll need to make sure that I'm making the right choices for that. Um. I think everything else should be fairly straightforward. And, before any of the history buffs get on me, yes, I'm fully aware that purple would not be a fitting historical color for this at all. Tiffamir is not royalty. Um, although you gotta admit that porphyry color purple would be the correct, at least one of the correct purples to choose. But, um, yeah, no, we're just, we're just going for it because it's a nice color palette. So, uh, sue me, I guess. <laughs> okay. Just, um... Just sort of refreshing my brain before we jump in here, because I don't want to jump onto a time limit and then find myself uh, up a creek without a paddle because my brain ain't on yet. So, yeah, we're on values. Half an hour done, half an hour to go. We... <sighs> to clarify, we have done all of the flats. They're They're good. Um, what we're messing with now are these shadows and highlights. Pardon. So you can see we've got actually a lot. I wasn't sure how the hair would feel when I came back to it, but I'm actually, I'm pretty fine with that. Looks kind of cotton candy. -y. Not necessarily what I would have gone for originally, but I think it's fine. Um, although this little strand right here could probably use a little work. But um, I really want to focus on areas that we haven't gotten to do any shading yet, and areas where it's maybe a little bit too intense. Um, so specifically, things we haven't done much with yet, the bow, wow, we even got the hands, They're, I'm not sure we've got 30 minutes left of shading left to go, other than we can mess with the tunic a little bit, and then the bow, which the bow is probably going to take some time. But then I also wanted to tweak this a little bit, and this boot a little bit, because I think the those areas are not quite, not quite where we want them to be. Not horrible, um, but could use a little improvement. <sighs> the other thing I want to do during this phase, and I think it's technically on the line work layer, but it definitely falls into this category, is I wanted to try something with the eyes, because they're not quite doing what I want them to. And I was doing some other tests over the weekend, and I think there's a small tweak I can make that'll um, be a noticeable improvement for them. So, keeping all that in mind, let me crack open our timer website, and uh, let's see what we can do here. Whoops. There's my desktop background. Congrats, everyone. You've seen all of the secrets I have. this timer window reset into something a little more reasonable. I need to get like a timer app or something so that it'll consistently fit with my overlay. Um, because uh, this is a little bit, a little bit inconsistent having to fiddle with this every time. So that's pretty much right. We're on values. Let me, hold on, let me make sure that we have the timer's audio in here because last time it didn't even play. Uh, I think we still were basically on time with it, because I've been watching it frantically. Uh, you know how it gets when you're, like, a few seconds away from the end, and you're like, um, um. <laughs> but, um, yeah, okay. I think that should play. If it doesn't, we'll still have the visible timer countdown. Let's... <sighs> Let me make sure I've got the right pen. For, yeah, we were using the select tool and the milli pen on the shade highlight layer. Um, hmm. I suppose we could do a warm-up first, but I, I think I've been putting it off long enough, don't y'all? I mean, we're only 12 minutes in. This is actually faster than I usually start stream. <laughs> um, Alright, last thing. Alt background. Makes the eyes look really, really ominous. And reveals some rough edges around some of these. That's good to know. But, uh, otherwise... Let's do this. Timer started. Okay, shade highlight layer. 
Obviously, we can do more with the face, but I'm going to keep it fairly light right now. It's already a fairly cartoony style. I mean, all of this is. That's kind of what we were going for. Oh, I didn't even set up the shades. All that prep, and we didn't even... I like that color palette. That's this one. Flip in. I'm going to try to smooth some of that a little bit. Yeah. By the way, how are y'all enjoying the uh, new soundtrack? It's still Harris Heller. They're great. Um, I'm just um, using a different one of their playlists. I figured the Sunday streams ought to have a slightly different feel to them, you know? Cool. I have some rough edges there. The biggest thing are the eyes. Which, uh, once again, as a reminder, are technically on the wrong layer. They're on the inks. How oh, cheapers? Uh, which one of the inks? Face, I'm hoping. Oh boy. Okay. For starters, let's um the grays layer, let's actually fill in the eyes. And I'm going to actually make sure we go in with the Millie pen and properly fill everything under here too. And if we can't see it, it's worth doing. Given that we're about... Normally, we can't see it, so no, it wouldn't be worth doing. But, we're about to go tweaking um, the pupil sizes. And so it might become visible. I'm thinking... Abron. I... Uh, uh, not the best at quick layer names, am I? <laughs> or maybe I am. These are much funnier than if I named it right. Or so pre equals cloak. Sure. Um, face, 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 face. Starters, is this this gray? No, it's the one above it. We're gonna want a fairly big brush for it. No, it's not even. Oh, right. It, okay. Should be this one, probably. Because it's technically the ink color gray. Ah. Uh. Oh, that's an S. Okay, hold on. Um, you need a larger vector eraser. I knew something like this would happen. This is why I try not to color in with vector tools anymore. It comes back to haunt ya. Okay, that's enough on that one trying to just clear out this upper edge. Nope. At some point you can literally just, because they're vectors, you can just give up and like drag them out of the way. Still not the most efficient process though. The problem is I don't want to hit the vector lines around it, because like that. Because it's all in the wrong layer. So it could easily happen. How many little ones are there? Uh, okay. Fine, for this one, we're going to actually just use the color from the ink slayer. We're going to try a smaller pupil out for size. Literally for size in this case. How's that look? I think that's a little better. And I still did it in the face layer, so it's still vector lines. Oh well. Now I just need to get rid of all of this. Easier said than done. Okay. Cool. No more line work tweaking. I think that just reasonably counts as it should have been in, it should have been the values in the first place. So the eye heights are still a tiny bit off, but proportionally, I think they're okay. I don't know what layer this thing's on. Oh, it's part of the line layer. I'm, I can't mess with it. Okay, 
let's focus on actually important stuff here. Where we left off the thing I'd wanted to do before the end of stream last time was the bow. So I'm going to try to take a little time on that because it's going to take some doing. I think we're going to want the selection tool for it, truthfully, because we're going to need to tweak this a little bit as we go. Um, this should definitely be in the shades and highlights layer. Try to just ease my whip. I mean, smooth transition into it, then it just got a little too far up. That did not make it better. I want it maybe this high by the time we're here. Arcing down. And it can arc back a little bit as we get down here, trying to follow the curvature of the bow a little bit. Um, but then I need to use the deselect. Clear up some of this mess. Wider strokes up here. Rather long, smooth strokes, so it doesn't look like I'm just chipping away at something. Though I technically am. Don't want that appearance. How's that look? Honestly, it's a level of contrast that's kind of distracting. And I assume this is the color itself, right? Yep. What we can do instead... Okay. One option that I tend not to take as full advantage of as I should have, or should, is um, we can, instead of doing the shadow on the back, we can do just a bold highlight on the front. And um, it's not like those things are mutually exclusive or cancel each other out. But for this kind of simplified style, I um, I think it can be overwhelming to do both in a lot of cases. It, it, it Just because it creates so much contrast compared to like the line work and everything else, that um, it ends up overwhelming stuff. But, I think in this case, it might be exactly what we need. Although it's a little wobbly, so I'll have to smooth that out. There we go. I think that's actually more what I want on the top, too. Yeah. Oh. Full stroke. And I need to deselect the part that's overlapping the arrow. And that's a little better. It gives it just a little tiny bit of depth without anything too distracting. Because as much as that's the direction of action, I'm not necessarily trying to draw attention to the edges of the bow itself. Not really the focal point. So. Each that hand. It's a little janky. But it was done within the time limit, so it's what we're doing. Okay. Here's my boot problem. Boot needs to contrast with cloak or else boot will look invisible. However, we're using our limited shadow palette, although we at least have one more dark than we did for Melania. Which is paying off well, because this has actually had a lot more dark in it than I expected. Provides good contrast, though. I think we're doing okay on all that. So let's, let's test what this ends up looking like. Oh, I'm on the erase tool still. The erase tool lets you select if it's the very first stroke, which is funny to me. Um, I'm, there's There are workflow processes or whatever where that does make sense, but it also means that I frequently don't realize I'm on the eraser tool until like a little bit later than I should. Okay, let's get the curve right. Wake up, brain. We'll try filling that in, seeing, I mean, that looks stinking sloppy right there. 
that's sort of the problem with the select tools like it's um, easy to get less than great edges Really, the shadow ought to be. Well, in this case, the shadow really does need to be on both of them, but I want it to follow the crease, so it's just sort of implying the right thing, even if it's not actually where the shadow ought to go. Um, then this should really be more on the underside of these creases than above them. And of course, this shadow we've got going on over here would uh, need to engulf all of this. But once again, we have an issue where that's going to put it really similar to another color in this section. Because I'm going to have to guess that, yep, that's not it. So it would have to be this, this gray. Which, um, honestly, I just don't think it looks that great. So I may do the old artistic license there, and uh, not worry too much about that one. I like that the boot has a little shadow on it. I'm not sure it's enough to really matter or notice. I'm just going to mostly leave it alone. I, uh, hmm. You know what? I may leave this really bold shadow here. Um, and the reason being is... Uh, Let's see. My main worry about it is that it makes areas blend together, but it's not like we want this to be a focal point anyway. Um, it's just to provide a little contrast for the ap apron and the boot and such, and there will already be a few difference. So just because the value is the same, I think having the different hues will be enough to set it apart without making it distracting. So, we will, uh, well, we'll see. But that is my hope. Okay, let's see. I'm going to need to think about on the color how I'm going to do it while maintaining the values below. I'm trying to remember what we did with Melania. Um, I don't know if there's a, pro a type of layer that like only shows, that only alters hue but not value or saturation. I'm sure there is. I mean, they've only got like 20 different options. I may, I may have to do a quick little uh, web search before we uh, launch into the color section, but that's okay. Let's see, the last thing I really wanted to focus on for this is the apron and maybe the tool belt. Tool belt's less of a priority, but you know, it'd be nice. One of those, what do they call it? It's, it's a nice to have. And clean up a little bit to help give it some more shape, though. Yeah, technically that's on the other shade layer, which I can still edit. This thing's always a little bit janky, isn't it? Good for other situations, it's just a tiny bit of a pain for this one. Okay, but going back to our shades and highlights, let's think about, we've got this sort of apron with its wild pocket. I mean, we obviously we could get some shadow going in under here, underneath all this. To imply that these bags actually have a little bit of an impact on their surroundings, which isn't a bad idea. One tier darker than C. Might be bringing too much detail to the area is the only issue. I, I kind of 
I'm liking the sticking with broader motions that we've been doing on a lot of this. Um, I want to do a little cleanup around this one. But, if we want to stick to something that's more simplified and abstracted, let's take these shadows out. Let's try another approach, because there's another... I don't know, there's a simpler thing we can do. Which would honestly just be basically doing a line underneath. Maybe a slight bump, but nothing crazy. But nice and smooth. That, a little bit of selection erasing. Don't want it on the bag itself. Then we can smooth that out just a little bit. Those quick lines are probably the better choice. Cleaning some of these up, cleaning some of those up. And if anyone has suggestions, by the way, you're more than welcome to chuck them my way. Um, I am... This is a backseating friendly stream. I will say that much. At least when it comes to drawing. A little bit less backseating friendly when it comes to games, but... We mostly don't play games where that matters, so that's fine. liking these chiptune ones. I'm gonna have to remember this uh, playlist. Let's see, does it add depth? Yes. Does it um, look good? Not super. Maybe another one where I have to rely on color a little bit. Our difference in shadows is so bold. Even between these two that were like way too close for Melania. Oops, nope, nope. It's just the the shadow is so stark. Maybe that's okay, but I'm not super into it. A little bit. A little bit goes a long way. Ah, of course, problem with the lines is it makes it look like it's just a gap there, but that's okay. We can work with that. Alright, okay, you know what I think I'll do for our last few moments here is uh, work on something where there's slightly less contrast so we can maybe, you know. Oh, nope. This is still one of those two high contrast grades. Awesome. What I wanted. <laughs> Maybe, as much as I like these, like, simplified value approaches where we have a very limited value palette, because you can do everything you need to with it, but there's some times where it might be nice to allow a little bit of gradient flexibility. I know we haven't messed much with gradients yet. Uh, beyond just having the set one and going. But uh, it would be potentially worth doing. I think this just actually should be this color. That's not even a shadow, that's just a correction. I don't want to draw too much attention over here, because um, it's janky as I'll get out. Oh, well that's part of why. Fill tool overflow. Fill tool is a lifesaver on these timed ones, but um, it is occasionally Occasionally incorrect. <laughs> I have no idea if that's going to translate. It's okay. Simple bit. Not really biggest priority. Funny that the only color the scissors have ended up having is in the gap where you technically shouldn't have color. 
I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It's just kind of funny. I do wish we could have fit more tools into this. Um, I didn't. I didn't prep enough in advance for those. There we go. The bags have a little more depth now. A bit more believable. Okay, where else do we want to tweak? I think we've kind of hit all the places we talked about um, at the start. Oh, okay, there is one more thing I thought about, but I don't think we mentioned at the start. Um, actually, two two little things. Also an error I just noticed. Oh, actually, I'm going to leave that alone for now, for a reason. I want just the littlest bit of shadow here. Low contrast. Nah, it looks like it blends with the bow. Okay, we'll leave it. Um, then... Air cleanup really, really was the other one. Yes. Yeah. Part of it's hair cleanup, because we did notice when we went to that other view that there's uh, two gaps in here that probably shouldn't have stuff hanging out the sides, but currently do. Zip that out a little bit. Not sure how that happened. Then a couple different iterations of things going on there. Ones just fell between the cracks. Or outside of them in this case. Good, that's on the correct layer. Then don't mess with us. We'll have to do a little cleanup, of course, but that's fine. There we go. That's got a little bit of a smoother connection now. Wow, yeah, the hair is pretty rough. I guess that's how you get it done in the right timeline, though, so can't complain that much because we got much easier to fix it and tweak it than uh, it would be if we'd spent 30 minutes on it and then rushed everything else, you know? I'm surprised at some of the gaps that are in here, though. Not sure how that happened. Because those aren't, those aren't like misplaced shadows and highlights. They're just straight up not colored in. Go ahead and do that just to sort of make sure we've got everything covered there. Cool. If that's on the shadow layer. That's what I'd expect. Kind of nice having a little bit of time to do cleanup at the end. We don't get that luxury with these much. Wait, but... Let's see, 6 minutes 45. We don't have a ton of time. Let's try to make sure our cleanup is good. And we can do some corrections to the shading. Maybe some highlights, we'll see. I think that'll do. Let's go under the shade layer and do some corrections here, because uh, this is understandably a little bit sloppy. Honestly, I'm not too worried about this fill line here. I'm going to go ahead and grab it while we're, you know, in the area. Correct that. You're trying to tell me that this line that I'm sort of following, I'm not even sure if it shows on stream. Okay, no. Okay, that's one more gap we have to fix on the other layer. The downside of these multiply layers is you've got to um, correct the... If there's actually like a straight up hole, you have to correct it on the bottom layer. You can't just draw over it. Here, that one I'll leave alone. It's pretty decent. This area is a mess. We'll come back to it at like the five minute mark. This area is also a mess. Definitely need some TLC. As does this one. Uh, 
let's just fix this a little bit that too. Like a misplaced line or something? Oh, okay, that's part of the pants layer. Well, I can't move that. That's what it is. Okay, that's looking a lot less bad. We're at 429. We went a little longer than I'd wanted, but that's okay. A little bit of other cleanup. But the priority cleanup is this little mess right here. And I don't know what happened. I'm back to the millipen, by the way. For this one, it's a little faster for these quick tweaks. Hmm. It, uh... I feel like this ought to still be the hair color, honestly. Even though it probably shouldn't. It's, like, kind of too distracting. Actually, no, it's this that ought to be the hair color. That one ought to be shadow. There we go, that's a little better. I don't know what's actually happening here and why that's just like... ...taking coconut... <laughs> ...coconut of hair. No clue, but it's there, so... You could always try just... ...having the shadow be not correctly directly tied to the ear. Makes the hair look more continuous. Yeah, it makes the hair look more continuous. Let's do that. The ear does lose a little bit of its own shadow, but just do a really light one in there, and I think that'll be okay. The other thing to consider during our remaining 2 minutes and 57 seconds is a little bit, a little more in the way of hair highlights. Now, we kind of already had this drawn-in highlight here and then some accidental ones. We can, you know, try to get a little more going on. So, holy cow, what... I don't know why that one's so bad. Even noticed that when I was doing the other fixes. Shade layer we definitely back. I know that we technically probably don't want it to go back to this, but I think it looks less bad. That's a line. Okay, we leave the lines alone. Cool, yeah, that's that's better. Think about where the light is though, this highlight doesn't work. If I'm gonna do a highlight, it'd have to be like crossways or something along some of the waves. But I'm not sure it's really going to add much in the time that we have to do it. Maybe a little bit. Like I'm, I'm pretty okay with the one happening over there. For this, that's messy, but fine. Um, no, honestly, it's kind of distracting. I like it better like this. So I will actually take the time to. Uh, Try to tweak this a little bit. Right up to the face, and then get it a little bit smaller. They appear at the top. Kind of our highlight on a smaller 50 seconds. Cool. Stick to the highlights out on that edge. Could do a little bit of highlight here, I suppose. Yeah, that kind of works. I don't know if that draws too much attention to that. But kinda. What we could do is, uh... the dragon. Yeah, I kind of like that. This was a line worky snafu, right? Oh, I guess time's up. 
cool. Then that's that. Shading complete, I suppose. Honestly, we did the bulk of it last time. Today was mostly tweaks and slight improvements and changes. I am glad we got the chance to do a lot of fixes on the hair, though. <coughs> Ooh, pardon. Okay. Now, like we mentioned before, I think I'm going to do a quick little web search. We're going to Firefox it. Um, and I'm going to check the SP layer uh, change hue only. <laughs> um, hue saturation luminosity layer. Uh, that's how to change hue. Ah, okay, so you can do that sort of overall one. This correction layers for color adjustment. I haven't messed with correction layers as much, or really much at all. And be clipping masked and layer masked and have their opacity and their mode adjusted. I'm still trying to figure out the difference or what the benefit of a correction layer versus just another layer clipped to the layer below it is. I'm sure there is one. I just haven't seen the explanation for it that makes sense to me yet. Or really any explanation for it, truth be told. I reject all the cookies. Okay. On some random person's Patreon? Yeah, you don't need my cookies. And I don't need yours. Oh, okay. You can use it to adjust saturation and stuff. Oh, interesting. Apparently there's a correction layer that if you did like normal gradient drawing, it would allow it to convert it to basically what we do with our very limited, like, set number of colors in the palette called posterization. Fascinating. First gradient just looks like the funny filter where you invert the colors. Not a shock there, but it's got its uses. Level correction we have actually messed with, I think. Generalization, uh, black and white, makes sense. And we have done the gradient map, of course, which is stinking wild <laughs> um okay that's not really what we need though is there a way to change the hue or saturation of the layer layer new correction layer hue and saturate oh i get it so why at least i think i get one of the reasons you use a correction layer when we were doing our gradient map, we were having to alter the colors themselves. Like I had to change the color layer, um, which is a destructive way to do art because if you want to go back later, it's like eventually it's going to be out of your undo buffer and then it's just like, nope, these are your colors now. Um, a correction layer means that you can basically do all that just as a layer that you could then turn on and off or delete or whatever later. Um, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So they're sort of the correction tools, I guess, and then the correction layers that are associated with them. Okay. Update this to one hour. Inks, values, final, at the hyphen. It's, this is such a silly thing, but it does a tiny bit annoy me that um, I can't do my folders in in order. <laughs> Because I'm like, I did values most recently, it should be at the top, but no, that definitely isn't how that should work. <laughs> but my brain is like, no, it needs to be at top. Okay, I am going to do one quick little mess with stuff. This is obviously not the color of our drawing. But as long as... Oh boy. Hmm. If I said value to... Okay, zero value is just going to be black. 
Um, changing hue and CSP. Okay, fine. We'll, we'll test the new correction layers. We'll see how that works. Layer, new correction layer. Oh wait, no, it's gotta be an actual like thing. No, nope, that's a layer mask, which is a whole different tool. And uh, something else that I should figure out at some point. New saturation luminosity. Um, well, crud, I don't know the actual hue on one that I want. Oh, okay, interesting. Okay, so yeah, it's just on the that scale then. Fascinating. Um, saturation, 50. Luminosity, zero. But what's it tied to? That's not affecting the actual, oh man, there's still gaps here? It's not affecting the actual um, drawing, it's just changing the background. Lovely color, though. Kind of like a slightly lighter than sea foam. Okay, let's try this again. Hmm. So somewhere in the values folder. New correction layer. HSV, I don't know, 27? That's not linked enough. 135. 135. Pure luminosity. Doesn't seem to be tying to any... Ah, okay. Nope, that doesn't... That still doesn't make sense. What on earth? Oh! Oh, that does make sense. It's because... This one's no longer mapped to the correct layer. Got it. Okay. But still, how am I? How do I get it to apply to the thing I want it to? Uh, let me open my actual sneaking Sifamir palette. What's the hue we're talking about here? <laughs> 319. Hmm. Honestly, maybe we just do this. Oh, wait, I can create a hue layer. Hold on, let's try that. Well, I don't think that destroyed anything. Let's create a new, new layer. New layer. Um, to me that it's. I'm not sure why it's not clipping onto the values. Great. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> right, yep, that did it. It's still going behind the rest of the drawing, though. Hey, welcome! Happy to have you. Thank you for dropping in. Just, I guess, a quick update on what we've been up to. Oh, yeah, I'm messing with the hue layers right now. Um, that's less important. We're doing, like, quick time trials on the drawing, so I'm trying to cut down my time from start to finish from, I don't know, 25 some odd hours to about three and a half. Uh, we got f we've, we've gotten it pretty close, I'd say. Um, we just got 15 minutes to go. We're not timing this because we're just learning the layer, but once we're actually doing the colors, uh, we'll have 15 minutes, and then that's that, and we're going to have to be done with this one. And it's on to the next one. Oh, is that what it is? 
So it needs to be... Well, it's in the values folder, though. Which should be the one. Oop, okay, no, that was definitely... No, that's not the button. <laughs> Jeepers. Ah. Sorry, you caught me on a new morning trying a new, uh, brand new technique. So this one's, uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, I mean, let's see. The main art is should be in this values folder. Like, we've got the inks, and then we've got this grayscale that we did. And the grayscale is the actual, like, color, for lack of a better word. The values. That's why I'm surprised this seems to be landing behind it. Just that stinking horrible scribble. <laughs> I don't know if it's because this layer is clipped to it, so it's... Oh wait. No, that wouldn't. No, that obviously... Yeah, it might be something where a correction layer is the better choice, but I'm running into a similar issue with it, which is kind of interesting. Not sure why it won't affect... I think I've gotten... Yeah, this is just a normal layer. Okay, it's gonna drive me crazy that this is just a scribble. Let's... do that and let's just have like a single solid color patch for one section okay hmm hmm well while I try to figure out the figure this out I just gotta say I love your uh, intro Came in guns blazing. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know why it's ending up on. It, it's like the layers are in the wrong order. Oh, that's a thought. Let me. Hmm. Just one. clip this, then it's just horrible. Um. Unlock the transparent pixels. But it, I mean, even even outside of the folder, it's landing behind it. I don't know why values end up locked on the front. And is that even a feature? Yeah, I mean that's. That's most of what I've done, is I'd, I'd normally just create a new normal folder, but at this point, if, if, if I just create a brand new layer, is it even going to, like, be in front or behind? Okay, good, that's showing normally. It's almost like the hue layer was locked to the background. Maybe, okay, hold on. We, we set the grays as the reference layer. Nope, okay. And we'll probably... I'm gonna leave off on that for now. We'll just, um... We'll just use our colors with some, uh... Low, with a, uh... Low opacity layer. That'll be fine. Hit a 20. Let's see how that works. Yeah, that's a little, a little faint. Not exactly a one-to-one -one on updating saturation, but it will do for our little time trial. And... Let's do 50. We'll leave it at 50. We'll get the timer going. And, um, yeah, let's see what we can do. Appreciate the encouragement. Let's see if we can't get this up and running. Oops, okay. I don't need the reference. That's for a different thing anyway, so. That. 
micro in our folder, and then we're going to kick this timer off. It's say Hughes, but we're not technically... <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking care of the locals. The... You know what, let's just start on one layer. If we end up with multiple, we'll end up with multiple. I'm gonna kick the timer off and we're just gonna do this. Zoop. 15. Done. Set, and let's go. Okay, it's a couple minutes and we've got plenty of color to figure out, so. First off, let's get back to our actual palette here. Um, boldest colors first. If something if something ends up on the drawing room floor, there's no going back to fix it later. Um, I'm sticking by my timer, even even if it ends up causing the whole thing to go awry. But uh, so I want to make sure that I'm prioritizing the things that actually matter, which is probably good practice. Whoops, in general, that's what I should be doing regardless. So it's a good habit to build. A little nuts with the fill tool at first. That will run into issues pretty quick, but yeah. Let's see. We'll we'll rough stuff in with this. It, you're fortunate. You've caught us right towards the end of it, so it's um looking a little more complete than it has been for a lot of it. Oh man, when we finished the sketch phase and I had to jump into line work, I did not think this was going to come together at all. So I'm quite excited that it doesn't look, you know, like just a random hodgepodge of lines. Let's see, we want the lighter one down here for the apron. Shorts. Get the darker cloak going. I will clean up all of this line work, but color blocking in first. Detail fixes later. Like that one. We're definitely going to have to fix that one. <laughs> Not cheapers. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to have so many, so many little edges to clean up at the end of this. Oops. Let's see what we can do. We're at 13 minutes already. We're doing okay, though. Stuff is showing up. I'm mostly worried about the tool belt and the face when it comes to having to get details showing in the right ways. And, of course, all of this line work that is uh, not going to be caught by the fill tool, so I'm going to have to manually get that. You know, I, I come in here talking about prioritizing, and I'm filling in stinking shadows around the legs instead of the parts that I know are going to take a while. Let's let's actually focus a little bit. <laughs> oh, I never did get a skin tone, did I? Well, I, uh... I feel like it'd be ominous to wear a skin-colored cloak. I may have to figure out something else for that. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> It'll be our little secret. Small fill, because the fill doesn't have good anti-aliasing. We've got to actually clean up our edges a little bit. Do, do, ah, nope. Well, I mean, I guess if we do green hands, then we'll do green hands, but we'll hold off. This is our limited palette. I will say we did try to keep to a very specific limited grayscale and palette for this in order to, partly to make it, you know, possible to do a little faster so we're not wasting so much time on decisions, but partly because it's also a helpful restriction to make sure that we're, you know, a lot of problems aren't going to get fixed by throwing more colors at it. It's get fixed by fixing the composition and such, so that's what I'm trying to uh, improve just a little bit. Figured my streaming schedule this month was going to be stinking bizarro, so I might as well do some interesting challenges for it. I should probably... Well, the problem is, do I clip this to the line work or the grays? And I kind of want it over both, so we're just going to have it over both. How are we doing? 11 minutes. Okay. Really ought to get back to color blocking, but the face is a focal point, so I'll spend a little more time on it. So to ask about you, are uh, what sort of stuff do you stream? Want to sort of introduce yourself? Or give your pitch if you want to? Uh, 
that in. That'll do for now. A little bit on the hair to do some cleanup around the edge of the face, because that really is definitely actually important. Okay, 10 minutes. We need to get more colors going in here. green going in here behind it whoop nope not that much <laughs> guess we'll just have to do that one manually okay with me cool this is definitely okay fine we're not fill tooling the pencil message received DSP forgot part of the hair. A lighter one for that. But yeah, I guess a little background on this character while we're doing the colors, if you're interested. Uh, this was based on an old D&D character, actually, as so many, so many drawings are. <laughs> but it's one that that campaign it went some places, but it didn't really get a good conclusion. So I've ended up sort of reworking the character a little bit, trying to come up with what I'd like them to be if I created them now rather than back when I did in stinking like eight years ago or whenever. It's been a long time. Ah, okay, not streaming at the moment. Uh, working on rebooting it. Drawing way too many Fox Girls. Let's see. Yeah, no, that's awesome and definitely good to spread the, uh, spread the info on how to draw. That's, uh, that's always worth doing. I mean, I started this as a sort of, uh, learning to draw together thing. I figure even if I don't get any viewers, I am um, getting a couple extra, um, you know, a couple hours of practice, a couple days a week. Pretty good way to improve, and I can give tips to people on what I've learned, and you know, maybe at the end of it, it'll be a cool catalog of how to learn. Oh, cool. Is that oh boy I'm gonna apologize that I am not great at Nordic pronunciation is that Hjemskot Forest I don't think that's quite right it's still a cool group Seven minutes. Okay, we're about to get the color blocks sorted out, and then we can go back and do all the corrections that are chipping away at me. Because jeepers. <laughs> Close enough. I uh, appreciate the understanding. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Pronunciation is always a wonderful challenge. I, uh,. Oops, no, not that bit. Oop, okay. Doop that out of here. Yeah, when I'm not streaming my actual job, I've got, like, international co-workers, and pronunciation is always just so exciting. For them as much as for us. Like, it's just, you know, different cultures running into each other in a new place. It's pretty cool. But, uh, it is also occasionally... Uh, a bit of a problem when we're trying to understand each other. Definitely mutually caused problem, though. Ah, yes! Sifamir! Uh, elf Ranger of sorts. Originally... Oh man, originally he, he was one of my earlier D&D &D characters. The only one I actually played on Pathfinder. And so he was a little one-note, I'm not gonna lie. Um... <laughs> His entire personality was he wanted to, whoops, well, he was naively trusting and wanted to just, uh, you know, give everyone a fair shot, 
uh, before initiating combat. Given that the rest of our party was pretty rogue heavy and oriented, this didn't go well. Um, so Sifamir had a bright stinking green cloak. A um, little less minty than this is turning out to be. I'll have to tweak that. Um, but um, just stinking bright green. And uh, he would, anytime they approached a new situation while the party was still dealing with uh, <laughs> figuring out plans on how to approach it stealthily, he would just walk up to the front door and shout greetings and salutations. And um, the party was not thrilled with this, so I had to tweak that a little bit because I don't want to... You know, you don't want to ruin the everyone else's fun. Um, but he, he was fun to play, and but he, uh, I don't know, never really got much development beyond that. So I've started, now that I've started streaming under the name, because you know, I hadn't looked at the character in a while, it was sort of a blank slate to work with, I'm trying to build out the character a little more. Uh, one of the few things he did do that was more interesting than just Elf Ranger um, was he definitely was as much a... Uh, at least attempted to be a traveling blacksmith along with everything else. Um, which mostly meant failing about 30, like 20 consecutive rolls on attempting to smith a sword and managing to finally make one that gave a whole plus one to wisdom. Which, uh, you know, is what it is. But it was fun. And so I'd like, since this is an art stream and I'm hoping eventually other stuff, because frankly, digital art is actually my weakest skill. Um, I'm much better at, like, tangible things like sewing or, um, I don't know, paper craft, 3D, 3D modeling, well, 3D modeling is still tough in its own right, but 3D printing and design and stuff there, all that stuff, stuff that I can do with my hands, it's, uh, I don't know, I find that's that fun. Yeah, Pathfinder! I, I ought to give it another shot. That group, that group didn't, it wasn't a great Pathfinder group, <laughs> um, we were all friends from school, but we all had different experiences. Like, it was a mix of people who were brand new to any sort of role-playing game, all the way to, um, folks who had a ton of experience and wanted to power game the heck out of everything. Um, which meant that we had one player who could average about 1d4 damage per round if they prepared stuff in advance, and another player who averaged about, I think, 7d8 or something like that. Uh, it was, it, it was, it was so unbalanced. Um... We had, we had roving, we, we did have rotating DMs, which was fun. Um, I was DM for a while, um, so Sifamir got less playtime during that. Um, but balancing for this party was a mess. Okay, I think... I'm just gonna use the background tone. We'll, uh... Oh, jeepers, this is not super working. Well, canonically, I think Sifamir was green. So, like, yeah, I mean, it was still fun. We, we had a good time. But, uh, could have been... Could have probably been a little better. Okay, we got two minutes forty-one. Let's do a quick glance. Oh, forever GM. Yeah, isn't that the truth? I am. Um, <laughs> I have definitely GM'd a lot more than I've played. Mostly Dungeons and Dragons fourth and fifth edition. Um, going back to like stinking middle school and even a little. Well, I didn't DM three point five. I did play a tiny bit of it. It's. It's fun in its own right, but it's definitely nice to get a chance to actually play a character once in a while, you know? It wasn't really designed with the idea that the cloak and face would be the same color. I think I need to probably do a little bit of erasing here. We'll just leave it as the grayscale. Okay, that's... <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh yeah, I haven't tried Pathfinder 2e. Not a fan of 4th and 5th? Ah, sorry to hear that. They're fun in their own right, but they're definitely kind of a different vibe. I've chosen the most inefficient way to erase this. Why did I do this? Why did I not just fill it with nothing? But yeah, they're, they're, they're all fun games. The point is, if you get a fun group of friends to play with, it doesn't really matter what system you're using. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I'm on, like, operations for a, uh, like, software consulting company. So it's, it's mostly behind-the-scenes admin work and stuff, which I actually really do enjoy as well. It's kind of a different part of the brain from the art, so it's, uh... It's nice. Ah, I mean... <laughs> there's, there's days. We all have our days. 
Yeah, I, uh... Ooh. Did some, did, did, I actually studied history and uh, a little bit of computer programming, so, uh, kind of a fun mix. Oh, hey, nice! Yeah, full-time art is awesome. Um... Oh, crud, I've got 14 seconds, and I've just noticed something that I need to fix. Um... Do I risk this? Six, five, four, three. Okay, we're not gonna risk it. We'll just say it's a glove. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess that's that. Whew. And you know, they say constraints are what drive creativity, right? Well, time constraints sure do drive some stuff. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, that actually didn't turn out garbage. That's something that I could share. Now I just need to get it up on Art Fight. Uh, gotta be prepared for that. <laughs> yeah, definitely forces your brain to think out of the box, and it forces you to get creative coming up with solutions. I, um... Ooh, boy. Okay. Well, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I I need to, before I do the next one, I'm going to have to do a little more research on hue, value, saturation, all that. I mean, I know I know how AHSV works, but I need to figure out what was going on with the layer. Because um, this is definitely, I wish I could have maintained the hue and the hue better. Um, but, you know, still. Oh, is it dead right now? Ah, I just updated it. Heck, damn it. Let me, I can throw that in chat. You just go to sifamir.com. Uh, huh, I'm gonna have to fix that. Well, thank you for letting me know. Okay, hold on. I wonder if I can edit that right now. Okay, I'll have to see if I can fix that afterwards. Weird. Hope it's not like region locked or something. That'd be ridiculous. Um, uh, I I do have one. I don't leak it much anymore. I don't like like Twitter has a great art community, but everything else on the site is just constant political stress. <laughs> um, and so like I try not to spend too much time on there because it stresses me the heck out. Uh, let me let me dig out my Twitter though. I do still update it and check it check it sometimes. It's just not as often. Yeah, Art World's definitely the place to be. I just um, I need to set up the plugins and stuff so that it'll um, it'll actually work. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's twittercom sifamir. If you're interested in following over there, I need to set up the auto post on that. Oh boy. But yeah, no, we'd love to have you in the Discord too. I update every time I'm streaming on there, and we try to, you know, the community's still real small, but we're getting there. Need to throw some more memes in there at some point. Hmm. Man, looking at this now, I really wish I'd had a chance to, like, make the bags. A different color, but I think that's okay. It works over well on the design. So, oh. gonna complain too much. And that technically puts us at. Oh, my Discord link! Someone just used it like yesterday. It definitely should be working. Huh. Invite invalid. Oh, tag nabbit. I'm gonna need to go make one that doesn't expire. Okay, I can definitely send you that link right away, though. That's an easy fix. Eepers. Yeah, sorry. Like, last week we just did a whole, like, revamp of all the social medias and everything, and so we're still, um, sorting out some of the, uh, odds and ends and quirks and such. Let me... Let me see if I can actually get a proper invite. Set this link to never expire. There we go. 
That should be better. You are the IT fox. <laughs> You're doing what I usually have to do. <laughs> uh, let's see. There you go. There's a link. I will update the one on the website. <laughs> Thank you for uh, manually bug testing all of my stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, welcome. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to try to, again, we just got this going like a week ago, so we're going to try to um, get this going um, a little more actively, a little more happening. Turning it on and off again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sometimes that, that fixes like most things. Uh, it's the running joke, but genuinely it works. Hey. Well, let's see. I think that's it for Sifamir. So that is it. We can go back, check the Pinterest a little bit. I wonder if there's a better way to sort my boards a little bit, because I'm trying to, as we do these speed runs, I'm trying to also make sure I've got a public sort of Pinterest board for each character. Trying to get, you know, ideas and concepts and stuff sorted out. Uh, so I need to start working on the next ones, it looks like. Alternatively, what we could do is go back to that Mikola illustration that's still... still been haunting us. I appreciate it. I may have to take you up on that. I need to need to get some more of my stuff sorted out first, but yeah. Let's see. Oh, recent. Where did we leave off on Mikola? Oh, jeepers. There's a lot happening here. Yeah, this one was not a five-minute illustration. <laughs> That wasn't relevant. Uh, keepers. Okay, I see why I got a little overwhelmed with this. There's way too many notes. You know, that's a fair point. We do need an art channel. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. Why don't we? Why don't we create a whole category for it? Create a couple going in here. Sure, we can. Let, let's. We'll, we'll get some stuff going in the art channel. Good suggestion. I'm gonna have to post some of the past stuff we've done on the stream too. Got. Jeepers, I've been doing this for nearly a year now. Um, I'm sure I've got quite quite the pile built up, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, please. Oh, jeepers. Wrong button. Always, always love to see people's different, uh, different uh, characters. Pathfinder, D&D, one of the other 50 million systems out there. I um Kickstarter's a dangerous place. <laughs> oh dang! Oh that looks so cool. Man. Do you mind if I show it on the stream? I don't wanna, you know, share art without asking. Man, this is awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Look at this. I love, I love Little Familiar on your shoulder, too. <laughs> oh, that's great. Man. You've got a really good dynamic pose, and pose too. Wow. So, so what's their name? Cool. 
Selkie. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, Alchemist. Oh, man. I've always wanted to play an Alchemist. I have not... I have not had the opportunity to do it yet. Um, but the idea of, like, doing the crafting and creativity on the fly as you go is just so fun. <laughs> Extronomistist. Extronomistist. Cool. And I love this. Snake with arms. <laughs> That's great. I like the way you've done the like the fluid and the orb too. That works really well. And the flask, I mean, but yeah. Well, if you do better now, you were you started pretty well. <laughs> uh, man. Oh, that's so cool. I love seeing other people's art and seeing what everyone does and different approaches to things. And I love creative D&D designs. I, uh... These days I try to come up with characters that would actually be an interesting design. Sifamir is, a uh, rather an old one. <laughs> so we'll, we'll keep working on it. But... Man. Oh. Player right. Oh, oh dear. Oh, that actually kind of looks cool. Oh, yes, please. More characters. Ah, Halberd's best. What you don't know is that this is a channel that is absolutely dedicated to halberds as the best weapon. <laughs> They're just fun. Not just in D&D or a Pathfinder or anything either, I just, I love halberds. <laughs> oh, nice. I like the lighting in this one too. Reflection off the back, oh man. But yeah, no. I, uh... I've got a sword. One of these days I'm gonna get a halberd. <laughs> in real life. So help me. I will find a way. Hey, old art can still be good. Just because just you've gotten better doesn't make the past awful. Man. Well, these are fun. Ooh! Ooh, action scene. Yeah, well, I can see the improvement for sure. Holy cow. Pretty detailed background, too. <laughs> but, like, I love the motion lines and you... Man, really captured the, uh, the action really well. I'm less than a year into this, but one day, one day maybe I'll reach this level. It's gonna take some doing though. Really impressive. Yeah, just gotta keep it up. I'm, yeah. Not the first skill, it's just the one that's the hardest for me to learn so far. <laughs> oh, thank you! I appreciate it. I, uh, I don't know. You know, honestly, part of the reason I've gotten into digital art and drawing is because it's so much harder for me than most other things. <laughs> and I think that's just true for most people. It's challenging. But, um, I don't know. It's a fun challenge. It's it's fun to have something that is really stinking difficult. It makes it more satisfying when you get, when you actually make tangible progress, you know? Like, stinking... Sewing, sewing is fun, and, like, I find much, much easier than drawing. <laughs> uh. hey. Let's see. What to do next? I don't think we want to jump back into Mikola right now. 
I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm... I have the bad habit of trying to jump in headfirst on stuff. Like, early on, I was like, okay, I'm gonna learn to draw, and then I'm gonna immediately make an animation. I'm like, no. <laughs> Hold on. One step at a time. But, but we're getting there. And we've come a long way from where we started on this. I mean, stinking... Man. Do you ever do Art Fight? It's an absolute blast. Um... I've got an old character on there, and I was just looking at it the other day and thinking that I've come a uh, yeah, a long way from where I was. It's not been that long, but like, man, this looks so much jankier compared to what I'm doing now. <laughs> just the line work and control and proportions and everything are so, so bad. No, no, I love seeing animations. Are you kidding me? But yeah, I mean, it was... July of last year, so it's been not quite a year. We're getting better. Oh, nice! Got Avatar intro vibes, but it's all new. Wow, man, that is dynamic. see. <laughs> I think the best the best animation I've done is uh, not quite the same vibe. It's uh <laughs> fun, definitely fun. Um not not quite as smooth, <laughs> but but blender is enjoyable. But yeah, oh man. Love the elemental ones. Let's see what else. Yeah, I one I, I I want to do old school animation. I've been reading through oh what's it called? Like the animator survival kit, sort of like the go-to guide and learning some of the things, but we we've gotta get a little more consistent at the um I need to be able to draw a little more consistently before I'll be able to actually move things. So we'll get there. It's great, isn't it? It's all of these things that you see other places and it makes no sense. And then in that book, you're like, oh, obviously it's, it's awesome. Love that thing. Let's see. I made a survival kit. I, uh, let's see. We sort of overthought the heck out of composition on some of these, but we'll... We'll get there. Oh! Oh, I gotta show off. It's... So, I don't know if you know Elden Ring. I did a sketch of the character Melania from it. Uh, based on... Based on some of the, uh, intro stuff. Let me... Oh, and then Art Fight. Oh. If you've not... If you're not in Art Fight, I'm gonna have to show you Art Fight. Um, but... Let's see. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Recent... Melania. There we go actually so given enough time I can do stuff that looks pretty decent <laughs> um, it just takes you know 20 hours which is a little more than I can dedicate to every drawing so that's why I'm trying to practice speed and sort of find a happy medium oh but yeah sting an art fight art fight happens um, oh, what month does it happen I want to say June Got too many tabs open. Where to go? <laughs> art fight. Yeah, but what art fight looks like is um, here's the website. Yeah, okay, it's July, and it's basically one month where they divide everyone on the website into two teams, and then basically the way you get points is by doing quote unquote attacks on the other team, which means drawing fan art of their characters. And then they can do counterattacks on you to draw fan art of your character. So the premise is basically that everyone gets to draw art of each other's characters and it's really fun. But it becomes competitive, so it sort of motivates people a lot better. Um, it's, it's really fun. 
It's very silly. <laughs> and it's a, uh, it's kind of, you can see from their Discord with 111,000 people, it's pretty big. <laughs> yeah, no, it's absolutely, it is it is a blast. And it's so fun to see other people's characters and designs and taking every sort of mix. Let's see. Even I, I don't know, these are old, but I did some sketches back in the day. But that was, that was a stinking wild experiment. Yeah, crazy poses are fun. Uh, oh, this was, this was art that I got from someone. This was so stinking cute. That was Sakura. It was awesome. But yeah, no, action poses, crazy stuff, pretty much anything you want on here. There's, like, someone who's done it. Uh, it's, it's, it's wild. You can see, even while we're talking, someone else has posted another character. <laughs> it, 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 it just always goes. Um, so yeah, no, I don't, I don't know what the theme of the fight next year is going to be, or which teams people will end up on. Because you can, you can technically choose your team, or it'll randomly assign you if you don't. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's just an absolute blast. Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, you really only need one character on there to get started. I've I've only got Salt, who was an old NPC from a D&D campaign I ran. Um, who is basically a hyperactive child. <laughs> um, but she's fun. Let's see. But yeah, my style has uh, shifted a bit. <laughs> Although I definitely, I'm not opposed to that old style. I just need to do some tweaks and stuff. Keep improving. Duck Paladin? Oh, yes, you do need to show that. Oh, awesome. I <laughs> love the crest. <laughs> oh, that's great. Really excellent sword and armor detailing, of course. And the chain mail, holy cow. Yeah, I know. Like, I was just thinking the feathers on it. Oh, man. Oh, it is. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> this is great. This is a great character. Oh, man. Great armor. I love the detailing, but the duck theme is just perfect. Are these, like, tiny little frogs on the shoulder? Yeah, I can imagine this took forever. This is crazy detailed. Man. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, uh, yep, I totally see that. Oh, man. Man, I wish Datto was here. Datto, Datto drops by sometimes, and they've got just really great art, too. It'd be fun to see everyone sharing. Because Datto would love these. Awesome. Yeah, you're right. I can't believe I forgot that. I... I was just like, we have a memes channel, that's it, right? That's, that's all we need. <laughs> yeah. Glad we got that fixed. I mean, we even have a stinking art channel in my D&D &D server. I, I don't know how I didn't think of this. <laughs> oh, man. That is fun with Pathfinder or D&D &D or any of the RPGs. When you've got a group that are artists, too. Because um, then you can get just stinking wild illustrations. Oh, yes! Yes, please. Gotta see Echo. I assume Echo is the one that's your, like, uh, stream profile and such. Yep. <laughs> like the hair.
Yep. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Oh man, okay. We're definitely gonna have to start posting more art on here. I'm gonna... Absolutely. That, that was a fantastic suggestion. Keepers. In composition. 73. <laughs> you need, like... Like a phone book for all of them now. <laughs> I'm so... I mean, hey, you know, if if you got the hang of it, go for it. Once you find your thing. Or a thing, anyway. Yeah, I've always been way too slow. Way too slow coming up with uh, new characters. Oh yeah, I, <laughs> I'm not surprised people ask you to draw them. I, I mean, you're an amazing artist, and I can see why they'd be popular. What's we got? <laughs> hey, if you're up for it. Oops, I, uh, what did I just pit? Click. Uh, I think I misclicked. That's fine. Cool. Yeah, I mean, with enough practice, we'll get there. <laughs> just gotta keep at it. And, um, not get distracted by too many other things. Which, uh, admittedly is the hard part, because I'm like, no, no, not, I don't mean like this, I mean like spending a month on Blender instead of drawing anything. <laughs> Which I have done twice. Not that Blender isn't also fun, but it is definitely, uh, different. Different skill entirely. Um, no, I, uh, give me, I am always happy to pause stream and check out, check out what people are up to, and what they're drawing. It's absolutely... Absolutely the fun of it. Well, I mean, we kind of hit the time. Technically, I've got 30 more minutes banked up that I could spend on this. Which I'm... Because I set the four-hour time limit and we're at three and a half right now. But, um... Two, five hour. I also kind of want to leave it as is for now. I know I'd said I'd do 15 minutes for color, and I may leave it be for the last little bit. Oh, yeah! This is cheaper as I... Let's see if I can do a 30-minute speed draw. That would be... That'll be a stinking adventure. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, hold on. First off... Get on my vector layers. Up me a vector layer. And also save the dang file. Welcome to my files. I have too many of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, mine's, mine's gonna get completely untenable pretty quick here in Sword Timber. And all the stinking title cards for videos, jeepers. Okay. Uh, let me... hold on. I've got... I've got Selkie open in one view. Let me... Well, let me make sure that I've got everything right. Yeah, okay. And then let's get the timer going. 30 minutes. Just as a reminder, the Sifamir one took me, like, still about four hours, and, uh... <laughs> and the Millennia one took 20, so we'll see what can happen in 30 minutes. I am going to... 
If you'll allow me to... Whoop, where did everything... I, there it is. It's back! <laughs> let me... Let me just get, like, the pen set up first. Yeah, we still got our tilt. We got a color that's a little more fitting. One always seems to work well. Decent pencil. Okay. And let's... You know, actually, let me do a thing here real quick, too. We've got the power. DSP. To figure out where the heck my desktop went. Add Selkie. Awesome. And we've got our Selkie reference. We've got our timer. And... Uh, oh, I've... 30 minutes. There we go. And let's go. Okay, cool. Timer is going. <laughs> no pressure. Let's start with face. Um, or technically, we could start with pose, but I'm going to try not to spend too much time on pose in 30 minutes. Let's see. Okay. Out in. Oh, that's getting a little too bad. Ah, well, I mean, headshots are fun, too, but I think that... I figure let's go ambitious with it at this point. Ears. Friends. This is going to be a fun challenge in its own right. Speed draw of a mostly new-to-me character. the eye shape. Let's see what I can do as far as eye shape's concerned. Yep, that's the truth. Oh, jeepers, that's getting a little too out there. Let's bring that in just a notch. There we go. Should not be spending this much time tweaking little details, but dagnabbit, I'm still gonna do it even if it's a bad idea. <laughs> we're on the vector layer, but we're not on the vector eraser, so let's fix the heck out of that real quick. too much about pupil detailing right now. Okay, not bad. I always end up readjusting my face shape a little bit once I've actually got the face in there. When I'm doing a rush thing, like, you know. With all the time in the world, yeah, I actually figure out face proportions and stuff, but... Oh, not quite the right expression. Nope, still not. I just keep doing the same shape and then saying, no, that's not right. Let's, let's try to actually... <laughs> let's see what we can do. Yeah, it's always fun to go back and redo, redo art of old characters. Here. We will, uh, we will adjust that later. <laughs> no time to get caught up on it. Okay, hold on. Is that, is that a braid going around the back there? Cool. Awesome. Weirdly, that is something I've practiced recently, so that should actually be fairly doable. Uh, well, no, hold on. Let's actually... The motion would still make more sense with it bending roughly the way it does in your actual image here. Let's let's I'm gonna do the hair mostly as I'm seeing it. 
and then we'll do some other tweaks with pose and stuff, I think. I'm making, my mouse making a lot of promises that I am not at all certain my hands can keep. We'll deal with the details on that a little more later, I say, once again, making promises that aren't likely to happen. <laughs> but we'll try. I just want to get the silhouette in there, mostly. That needs to not be... do it. Cool. Okay. This one also probably needs to go a little more. Yeah, there we go. Let's think about collar. Also going to think about shoulder. Okay, so let's try to actually do semi-original pose. It's not exactly off the ref, just to make things a little more exciting. Okay, we've got, got the collar coming in there, got the shoulder strap. Hold on, collar symmetrical. It is, it happens to be bent out in this case. Okay, cool. It's up at the moment. Just feeling that one out. What are we doing? 23 minutes and 54 seconds? Okay. Not enough time to relax, but enough time to hope. <laughs> um, actually, if I want the angle on this, let's... Ah, this pencil brush doesn't play nice with the vector tool. I'm gonna have to tweak the brush. There we go. That's more the angle that we want. Now, it's just a matter of... Let's see... Um, no, that's a little too... more crouch. Roughing this in. halfway recognizable. Er, hold on, let me... Because that looks too small compared to the bottom. Crossbow vibe. Let's see. Okay, this'll work. We'll just... Focus more on the arm here. And on the fact that the pauldron's facing the wrong way for what I'm trying to do. Let me caught somewhere. Okay, the elbow. Wish I'd figured out proportions a little earlier, but that's okay. Some added gauntlet going on this side. Ah, okay, yeah. Oh yeah, medic medic classes are actually super fun. I 
Well, granted, the best medic class idea I've had is incredibly stupid, um, so it's no shock that I've never gotten to play this character, but I've got a character named Claire. Uh, Claire Ick, who is a necromancer, who doesn't realize they're a necromancer, they just think they're really good at bringing people back right before they die. It's gonna be a problem one of these days once someone figures that out. Exactly! It's like, look, you weren't fast enough, I'll solve your problem. crossbow in here. I wanted this really dy dynamic to try to point at the crossbow at the camera, but we do not have time to change that. I want this grip to more... Nope, I don't want to cut the layer. I actually want to hit Control z Wish those hotkeys were not right next to each other. to hook into, but we're just going to keep moving. Yeah. Funny, I may be doing art now, and I may be, you know, in, like, operations at work, but I actually studied medieval history in school. <laughs> so I get... Even when I'm having to do a quick crossbow, I'm like, no, I want to draw it right. <laughs> gauntlet on that one. See how much of that we can still fit in. Ah, nice! Multitasking! best parts of having a familiar. Well, that and the, you know, companionship and friendship and all of that, Jack. Got the collar. Oop, we still need at least the top part of the sash. Start much further over, actually, rather than finally winging it. That's one of the best things about doing fan art and actually getting to draw things, is you get to notice little details that you don't catch on the first go. With the angle, though, it's mostly going to be facing away from us. Like... Ah. Still, the point should be over, still. How are we doing on time? We're about halfway. Cool. Oh. Yeah, it looks like it does. Okay. It's gonna be getting pulled more like this, though. Arced out. Let's 
see more of the side and the length of this one. Yep, yep, that's... You're, you're absolutely right. You need something a little heftier than just, like, a loose leather belt for that. Ah. This kind of book is one that is stinking full of tags and markers and sticky notes. <laughs> Definitely didn't... Uh, okay. True story of how much of a stinking uh, nerd I was in school, and I stand by that being a good thing. I'm still a nerd, and I'm very happy with that choice. Um, yep. Yeah, but, like, I, I uh, annotated one of my books so much, and my professor knew the person who wrote it, and... Um, <laughs> I had so many sticky notes in it that my professor took a picture of it and sent it to the author. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I may have done slightly too much. <laughs> it's fun, though. Definitely not worth the time of drawing that. That's fun. Flash, isn't it? Cool. There we go. That's loose indication of alchemy. Oh, baggy clothes. Fun challenge. Difficult challenge. No, it's thinking most of what I wear. <laughs> it's still not easy for me to draw sometimes. Hold on. Think about the leg below it and figure out where exactly the Okay, they go past the knee, so that's going to change the fabric flow. Okay. Doesn't mean I'm going to be able to draw it any better, but at least knowing that I can try. Hey, knowing a lot of random thing is honestly more fun sometimes. It's thinking... That, that book I annotated was a stinking, <laughs> like, medieval... <clears throat> Pardon. Early medieval fairy tale book. Um, so definitely not the most applicable to everyday life. <laughs> Let's see. Ah, okay. Elastic and then leg. Got it. Cool. Follow the flow of the leg even. So. Like the boots. It's always interesting to see how people draw boots. Because there's a lot of very generic ones out there. And so it's fun when there's something that's like tries to mix it up a little bit. History nerd me always tries to go back to actual history books and figure out like, oh, what would actual boots have looked like? But that's not always the most fun for a character. Um, so I have to tweak it a little bit. Although frankly, some of the stuff in history, like um, there is one actual like 13th century cloak that was very popular that does look a lot like they have cat ears. So of all the things that could be canonical, that one might actually be correct. Uh, cat hero, cat ear hoodies from the uh, 1200s. Who'd have thunk, really? Eleven minutes. And we'll figure out some of the creases on this a little bit better. Because that's way too far down the stinking leg now. Up here. Or up. I'm gonna bag out on the bottom and sort of bunch up at the top. There we go. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's fun when it's different, but still like actually a little bit practical. Um, it's it's lovely as the as the Buster Sword from Final Fantasy is. It's a little bit jarring.
Hmm, my ground plane's a little off, it would seem. That can be adjusted later. I'm gonna get these roughly right first. Actually, it can be adjusted now if I just adjust this shoe a little bit. I think the issue is that this one's too far down, truthfully, but, uh... Lasso Tool is my savior, as always. Ah, I like the angle better, a little more dynamic. But we're gonna move it up a bit. Yeah, I... I like Rule of Cool stuff, but I do also like when it's actually a little bit practical and not just... This looks cool, but if you think about it for two seconds, this character won't be able to walk. <laughs> like, there's a middle ground. I guess that really needs to be more at the ankle, doesn't it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend my little character Salt isn't um, just maybe the least useful character ever. She's a merchant who mostly sells junk, like moss that she finds, which my uh, player characters managed to use to just a number of problematic effects, so I need to stop giving them things like that. <laughs> or give them more. Hold on, let's... I don't like the curve of that. Oh yeah, witch hat, big hat. Gotta be. No question. Gotta have big hat. Yeah. Yeah, I got eight minutes left, so you probably won't have to wait too long. <laughs> but this has been a fun challenge. Thank you for suggesting it. Yeah, it's more, you know, actually kind of finished than I'd expected. I mean, we'll see. There's still plenty more to fix, but... No, that's... Back here down here. Really got more up back here, but... No. More going. But yeah, thank you. No longer need that alignment line. How are we doing on... Oh, these proportions are awful. Hold on. Okay. Eight minutes. Eight minutes is time to fix proportions. Mainly face. Face need be smaller. The, the whole upper half is a little off. Yep, yep. We were, we're on the same page with that. I get so faint when it's lassoed. I'm gonna have to adjust the collar too, which is fine. The shoulders are a little too big as well, um, but that's that's an easier fix. We can do that. Lassoed this collar a little smaller too. Should have just done that with the face, probably. The other collar is not so bad. Clean up, but that's certainly fine. Also, it's part of why that's looking too big. Oops. That we over there. Okay. 
some extent, some of this is just turning into a mess of lines, so I'm going to have to be a little more careful about that. Look at the belt under here. That's actually sort of be visible. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? That's a helpful that's a helpful hotkey, the transform. I did not know about that one. We'll redo that collar. I just need to clear up some of these little loose ends from stuff that didn't quite get moved, right? Yes. Yeah, I... I have a bad habit of waiting way too long to learn hotkeys on anything. And they're always helpful. But, like, and I, I was so stubborn, I was like, I'm not using Control-C and Control-V. I can right-click and that's just as good. It's not. <laughs> it's definitely not. There's actually like a little band there of sorts. Bag. Cool, we get to actually see a little of the that sleeve. That's fun. Oops, that was the wrong hotkey. <laughs> Clean this up a little bit. Really? Oh, that would be it. That is a useful one. Okay, how are we doing? Three minutes, 12 seconds. Cool, 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 cool. I actually want to continue the, continue the braid down one more before I bring it in. Still not, not the erase button. Cool. An expression doesn't necessarily fit the final pose we got. I think that's okay. I'm trying to figure out. Can I make this look focused? Well, it's probably got the crossbow a little too far forward. And we've got 2 minutes and 15 seconds, but yeah, it's fun. Hold on. I'm going to try one really dumb thing to attempt this late in the game. We're going to try it. And then I'm going to undo it if it doesn't work. Roll T? Yep. Nice. I'm going to shift this back just a tiny bit. I think it'll work better with the shoulder and with the other arm on the crossbow. The overall pose. Control S will also work. And I use Control S all the same time. Um, clean that up. That way the pauldron's a little more of the silhouette and so it'll be more visible. And if it's not quite looking the way that I'd love it to, I'd still rather it be there than not. How have I mixed up my muscle memory today where I keep hitting pen instead of erase? One minute and seven. Cool. Other loose ends around this that need to get cleaned up. Actually, I think that is part of the crossbow. I think it's this thumb needing to actually come over the crossbow. That's fine. 
Hmm. Well, I mean, you know, it's it's hardly the best that I would love to do, but for 30 minutes, it's not horrible. And um, one more last second lasso tool. I could hit Control T. I'll work on that. Needs to be a little bigger. Not like a ton bigger, but just a little bigger. That's the problem with sort of just like um, going all the way through on these. Not four seconds. No more changes are happening there. Thanks, yeah. But yeah, the challenge of not figuring out proportions in the first like minute or two means that uh, it's easy to sort of lose track of them later on. <laughs> but still, overall, that's... You know, not the worst. <laughs> <sighs> I can at least... Oops. Flip this and get something a little bigger going. Ah, yeah, I gotta see the witch. Ah, cool. Oh, I like the sort of Dreamcatcher spiderweb thing going on with the staff. Oh, that's cool. And the moth. Ah, heck yeah, moth. Hey, can I... I can't zoom in on it on Discord. Dream Witch, fitting. Let's see. You haven't by chance played Hollow Knight, have you? I don't know if it's symbolism with this particular type of moth, but there's a moth of the same sort also associated with dreams in that game, so it's it's a cool motif. But yeah, oh, I love these ones with the little fuzzy antennae. I, uh, I did want to make a D&D character entirely based on a moth. I need I need to heckin' finish his character design and draw him. Stinking Carrix. Yeah, they're so fluffy! Ah, uh, they're adorable. Yeah, we had like a whole... Oh. I had like a whole underground background story of, uh... Where like the whole Underdark was moth and bug themed. It was fun. Okay, not that. my signature a little bit, but we're getting there. Ah, tiny moth! Okay, hold on. Moth. Gotta have the moth. <laughs> and Mothra. Well, not Mothra, but Mega Moth. Yeah, they're just adorable. Yes. Yeah. Aw. Oh, I just love these little the little antennae. They look like leaves and feathers. They're so cute. Oh wait, thank you for sharing. <laughs> Here, I'll throw I'll throw this one in the chat, or at least throw it for you. I'll have to export it. Oh, let's Whole exports folder. Oh, jeepers. I have to crop that a tiny bit. That's fine. Oh, there's so much random old junk in here. <laughs> I appreciate it, yeah. Uh, here we go, yeah. Let's. Just a little bit of cropping at least. Vector lines, I probably could have made them darker lines and such. You know, there's always more that can be done. Heck is, uh... Here we go.
Ah, that's the truth. A little bigger. There you go. I mean, it's a little rough, but uh, you know, for 30 minutes it's fun. Thank you for that. That was that was a blast. Uh, unfortunately, I am gonna have to wrap up for this morning over here. Uh... Oh yeah, no question. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think that even I can identify some pretty clear places to improve and tweak on this one. Um, constructive criticism is always good, but uh, I, I think I see the next steps to take. So thank you, thank you, and have a good one. Hope to see y'all again sometime.